We're here to unveil our newest electric vehicle charging stations in Salt Lake City and to also celebrate this wonderful achievement of passing House Bill 411. Yay! <laughs> Um, so just to give you a quick run of show, uh, first we're going to have Mayor Biskupski speak, then Rep. Steve Handy, then Park City Council Member Tim Henney, then Summit County Council Member Glenn Wright, then Gary Hogeveen with Rocky Mountain Power, Grace Olskamp with Heal Utah, Ashley Sotishak with the Utah Chapter of the Sierra Club, and then Josh Kraft with Utah Clean Energy is going to close us out. So um, I have a couple copies of these if you need them. Um, we can also email you again. So with that, I'll turn it over to the mayor. Great. Well, I can turn it on is if that's better. Okay, very good. Well, welcome everyone. This is an exciting morning. Uh, I am joined here with Representative Handy and we were talking about the phone calls going back and forth during the session and uh, I'm so proud and grateful for uh, the work you continued to do even when things got tough. So much gratitude to him. And uh, to my fellow colleagues from Park City, Summit County, Heal Utah, Utah Clean Energy, and the Sierra Club uh, to cut the ribbon on one of the city's newest EV charging stations. With this kind of turnout, we know this isn't an, an ordinary ribbon cutting. Together, we are celebrating the passage of HB 411 the Utah Community Renewable Energy Act, which the governor will symbolically sign later today with other important clean energy bills or clean air bills. The EV stations we will open this week here at, and at the Regional Athletic Complex and Mountain Dell Golf Course will join a network of 50 stations across our city with many more in Summit County and Park City. Thank you to Salt Lake City Engineering and Contractors Black and McDonald and B. Jackson for your help with the installation. These newest stations will become part of our clean energy infrastructure at a time when Utah is making a giant stride toward a cleaner and greener future. While there is still much work to do, the passage of HB 411 means simply that 100% clean electricity will soon be a standard for Utah's communities. Our communities have asked for this and we have been working toward this day for many years. As the co-chair of Sierra Club's Mayors for 100% Clean Energy, and chair of the Conference of Mayors Alliance for a Sustainable Future, I have held the privilege of traveling around the nation spreading the clean energy message. In 2016, when Salt Lake City made our pledge to be powered by 100% renewable energy by 2032, we were the 16th in the nation. Today, there are more than 110 cities and counties proving that local residents across the country want to do their part. As I have spoken with my colleagues in other cities, many have asked me, how are you going to reach your goal? Well, the answer to that is on display today. Leaders from a variety of communities and from various politi political backgrounds, standing with our electricity provider, alongside our local environmental nonprofits, all focused on the same goal, to create a new standard for communities. Thank you, Representative Steve Handy, Senator Hemmert, and Representative Quinn for shepherding HB 411 through the legislature. Thank you, Park City, Moab, and Summit County for joining forces with Salt Lake City to provide the knowledge and resources needed to make this a reality. Thank you, Heal Utah, Sierra Club, and Utah Clean Energy for advocating for a cleaner tomorrow. And thank you to Rocky Mountain Power, especially former CEO Cindy Crane and current CEO Gary Hogeveen for taking a chance 
on a new idea. When Governor Herbert symbolically signs HB 411 later today, it will be history making. No matter what and no matter where in the nation does legislation like this exist, we are the model. This is a legacy we should all be proud of. And yes, other states are watching and working feverishly to follow our lead. This is a legacy that we will allow our children to breathe clean air. This is a legacy that will keep our communities and Utah at the forefront of the economic benefits of a green economy. A legacy that now allows us to say that a future Winter Olympic Games and Paralympic Games in Salt Lake City and Park City will be green and clean. Thank you. I'm going to turn some time over to Representative Handy. Well, happy Earth Day, everyone. I'm uh, really happy to be here today. Um, in case you didn't know it, we're in the we're in the on the cusp of what I'm going to call the new energy economy. And as the mayor has uh, well articulated, a vision is something that is just going to to roll forward because it's all about what the people want. And I think in the legislature, from my, my perspective, when it comes to energy issues like this, I think it's responsibility of the legislature to remove barriers. And so this legislation removed barriers and provided a, provides a framework for which this, uh, this really great initiative can go forward. And as the mayor articulated, <laughs> This is groundbreaking. There is nothing like this in the country. We couldn't find anything that we could model or, uh, or copy. And I want to just, uh, I got to be the point of the spear on this. It was a very tough bill, but I want to give credit to the team from Rocky Mountain Power, headed by John Cox, the, uh, the, uh, Luke from Park City, Tyler from Salt Lake City, and uh, many others who were standing here who were trying to educate legislators in the very few day, final days of the legislature to be able to move this forward. Now, there's a lot of work yet to do. It has to go in front of the Public Service Commission, but we provided uh, a framework of, of, uh, a framework of uh, guidance and language that, the help can, that can help the Public Service Commission understand legislative intent that is backed up by senators and representatives who voted for this, the governor who has signed this, and uh, the people of the state of Utah who want to see uh, big changes in our new energy economy. So thank you to everyone. Uh, it was a team effort to get this done. And uh, I'm very proud of uh, the team that we were able to work with and uh, would now uh, turn the time to the next speaker. Well, thank you, Representative Handy and Mayor Biskupski for talking about Park City as one of those communities that has joined the renewable effort five years ago, Park City put into place the most aggressive climate goals of any community in the United States, and some will say globally. Uh, also, uh, Representative Handy, thank you for being the tip of the spear on pushing this progressive initiative and talking about the green economy. In Park City, we have taken that seriously. We responded to the request from the community. We are running currently 10 all-electric buses in Park City. We are looking to replace our entire fleet of close to 40 buses, so 30 to go. Old diesel buses with electric buses, that's an ongoing program. We have electric uh, bikes for our bike share program, and we are hoping to roll out 100 charging stations uh, as soon as possible and hopefully this summer. Those plans are well underway. So we are a unique community in Park City. Uh, we are becoming increasingly unique. We have lost six years of winter or six weeks of winter since the 1970s. And uh, our tagline this year from our Chamber Bureau was winter's favorite town. Well, you have to have winter to have winter's favorite town, and that could make us very unique. So that's why it's important to our community. That's why we see this as a game changer. When we instituted our policies and our goals five years ago, there was no clear path forward. There now is, and we want to thank the state legislature and everybody who did the work on House Bill 411. Thank you very much on behalf of Park City.
Good morning, I'm Glenn Wright from the Summit County Council, and I'm gonna be brief. The it, passage of HB 411 has been one of the most groundbreaking act, you know, legislative activities in the history of our state. It affects not only the environment uh, for the state of Utah, but also the future economy of the, of the state of Utah. You know, Summit County is very interested in protecting the environment the environment and the economy are intertwined in Summit County. Losing as part of the ski season would be devastating to us, but also on the eastern part of our county. Last year, during a bad snow year, our ranchers were chasing water, as they put it, by early June. And that effect is, will have a, a devastating effect on the agricultural community in the state. We're in the midst of a paradigm shift uh, for energy. Renewable energy is now very competitive with fossil fuels. Utah has always been a energy state. And if we're going to continue to be an energy state, we have to make our transition to renewable energy. And this bill allows us to do this. I'm going to ask one thing of our the people watching this broadcast. If you're on a city council or a county council or a county commission, You've got the opportunity by the end of the year to sign on to work with us on this. If you're a voter in any of those communities, call your commissions in your counties and ask them to do so. Thank you. Good morning and happy Earth Day. I well, apologize for that. Um, my name is Gary Hogeveen, President and CEO of Rocky Mountain Power. And I couldn't be more proud and pleased to be here this morning uh, to participate in this event. Um, the passage of House Bill 411 uh, was a very difficult process, uh, one I'm very pleased we accomplished. Uh, and it really sets apart this, uh, these, these organizations, these communities and, and, uh, and, and those that uh, helped pass this bill. It wasn't simple, simply because it's not common. And it's not common, I think, because Utilities uh, like that, which I lead, don't typically step out and do things that they're not used to and not accustomed to. We did. And we really did that because we care about what our customers want. And it's very clear that the communities of Salt Lake City and Park City really want 100% renewable power. And we are in the business of powering the greatness of our customers. And so we did the unusual and we worked with them and we worked with Representative Handy uh, to, to pass this bill and we're very proud of that. Um, we will continue to work through the process. As Representative Handy said, there's, it's not done. We'll go through the commission and, and set rules and procedures, but we understand what our customers want and we're here to deliver that and I couldn't be more proud. So thank you. Hi everyone, my name's Grace Olskamp and I'm with the Healthy Environment Alliance of Utah aka Heal Utah. Um, if you're unfamiliar with us, we've worked for the last 20 years here in Utah to tackle some of Utah's biggest environmental threats. Primarily, we focus on energy and climate, clean air, and radioactive waste. At Heal, we strive to create change through local action and widespread collaboration. The bill we're talking about today, HB 411, is really the perfect example of this combination. In order to create a more sustainable future, Local communities here today took the problem of climate change into their own hands and decided to work alongside many others to create an effective solution. Heal hopes, in light of HB 411, that the bar is set even higher for even more ambitious clean energy initiatives across the state of Utah. And we hope that other cities and other states can really start viewing Utah as a clean energy leader in this country. Thank you very much. Pass it over to the Sierra Club. Good morning and happy Earth Day. Um, I want to begin by thanking Salt Lake City for spearheading this groundbreaking initiative and Mayor Jackie Biskupski for her outspoken leadership on climate action as the national co-chair for the Sierra Club's Mayors for 100%. My name is Ashley Sotishek and I'm the director of the Utah Sierra Club. We are a local environmental nonprofit representing over 40,000 grassroots supporters across the state of Utah. 
These are folks who are deeply concerned with making a swift transition to renewable energy and away from polluting fossil fuels. We are proud to be part of this diverse coalition working creatively and collaboratively to impact meaningful change here in Utah. HB 411, the Community Renewable Energy Act, is a powerful tool for change, which will allow communities who seek 100% renewable energy to be able to achieve their goals by 2030 with new renewable energy coming online in the state. We are grateful for the commitments already made by Park City, Summit County, Salt Lake City, Moab, and Cottonwood Heights, and are excited to see even more cities embrace renewable energy across our state. The Utah Sierra Club is excited to work with communities throughout Utah to make the switch to clean renewable energy to protect our climate, our public health, and our economic viability as Utah continues to lead the way into the future. We owe a debt of gratitude to Representative Handy, to all of our city officials, to community partners, and fellow activists who have helped to work diligently to ensure that local communities can choose net 100% renewable energy to power their homes. Even as Utahns embrace cleaner, cheaper, and healthier energy, we urge Rocky Mountain Power to retire its uneconomic coal units and to work for a just transition for coal-dependent communities. Thank you. Morning, sir. Morning, everybody. I'm Josh Kraft with Utah Clean Energy. Um, Representative Handy referred to a new energy economy that we're starting to see here in, in Utah that our families and our businesses are excited about. They want more access to clean, renewable energy. But that transition requires leadership. And we're really, we're so proud of Representative Handy, of Mayor Biskupski in Salt Lake City, Mayor Bierman in Park City, the leadership in Summit County for coming together to forge this creative Utah-based solutions to help the communities move towards quickly towards 100% renewable energy and to harness the abundant clean energy resources we have here in Utah. Um, we're, we're thankful for this leadership and we look forward to making sure, uh, implementing this legislation and making sure with Rocky Mountain Power that it can work. Thank you.